it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I am going to do something a little bit different for me because I have never ever owned Distress Oxide sprays before and I frankly don't really have the room for them in my craft space. So when I want to try something but <laughs> it's tricky to make it work, I decided that I just would get three or four colors to try out. I am not one of those people who kind of have full set syndrome so it doesn't bother me at all and to me it made sense to get roughly ish the primary colors and that way I could have fun and I knew that these would all go together and I could make new colors from these if need be. The next thing that I have today that I always find around my craft space is random cut off scraps of white cardstock paper. So these are not all the same size. I have one kind of bigger piece that's an off colored uh, piece. It's kind of an off white. It's not the same as my usual cardstock. And then I have all of these smaller pieces here, which kind of range from one and three quarters to about two and a half or so inches wide. And these are just off cuts when I've done square cards or, you know, something a little bit different. And I kind of end up getting a stash of them and I have to make use of them. Otherwise, they kind of just sit there. I do use them for sentiments and things, but they're kind of not wide enough to cut circles or ovals or things like that. Um, and I also have for this video a couple of my most favorite ways to create marks on my paper. So once I have these nice and saturated with my oxide inks, my most favorite way, and this seems a bit silly, is just a kind of scrunched up baby wipe. And I just come in lightly with it and this just makes the most fun texture in my opinion. I don't change the kind of the baby wipe around, I don't move it around and it doesn't transfer color very much. It just gives these amazing marks that stay put, this kind of crumpled, papery, textury kind of look. I just love it because it's so simple and I love simple. Now obviously one of the other ones that is very very simple is bubble wrap and these two in my craft room kind of get me everywhere. The scrumpled up uh, little baby wipe technique. You could try any sort of lightly damp cloth that you have in your craft space. You could try paper towels, they pretty much do the same thing. You could try a microfiber cloth, you could try your cleaning rags, you could try anything like that. Um, and it is going to give you this just gorgeous, really simple technique and it works brilliantly with the oxide sprays. In case you are wondering, I went with tumbled glass, mustard seed, and I actually went with saltwater taffy for the pink. However, I think if you wanted to get the kind of proper um, pink, I maybe would have gone with a worn lipstick or something like that. Um, and I just decided that I kind of like these light-ish colors. Uh, but I did want to go with the saltwater taffy just because I don't even own the oxide ink in that. And I thought that would be fun just to try it out since it's a relatively new ink color. Now this is the other way if you don't want to kind of um, do everything while it's all wet then this is just adding the oxide sprays on then I take another piece of paper and I'm going to dab up some of that ink because oxide sprays put down a lot of ink and I do feel like there's kind of quite a bit of wastage with them I guess um, you have to kind of make the most on purpose you have to kind of set out to kind of make the most of where the ink sprays everywhere um, but I guess that's just the nature of the beast and if you don't like it then I guess we don't purchase them correct um, so I have mopped up some of the ink with another piece of paper which again I can turn into another background then I'm going to dry these ones first before I go ahead and add any of the other textures on top. Now this is just one of those kind of cards that is really, really good for using up the extra pieces of cardstock that you have around in your space. So let me know in the comment section down below. Do you end up with all these kind of pieces as well? Um, I just find that if I'm making like a certain batch of cards, like square cards, I'm going to be cutting off all of these kind of, you know, one inch strips, two inch strips, two and a half inches. Um, so yeah, and after a while they kind of um, collect and I get a pile of them. And that's usually my cue that I need to do something with them. So this one here, I have the pieces all dry. I have uh, sprayed some of the tumbled glass down onto a non-stick mat. Then I take my bubble wrap to this one and I'm going to pop this on. This is kind of a little bit less messy and a little bit less intense and you can just uh, be a little bit more purposeful with where everything is going. As I said, I just have these three colors and I'm pretty happy with that. I don't really have too much intention to go back and grab more. Um, as I said, that's, I don't mind not having full sets of anything. In fact, I have full sets of nothing. But nonetheless, take a look at how this dried. I love the texture 
that that damp baby wipe creates. It is so gorgeous. So just with a baby wipe and bubble wrap, I love that really large textured piece and those three other pieces. And then these ones here are a little bit more plain, but these are still really good for turning into backgrounds. And in fact, I'm going to shoot, use these ones today to show you. And mainly because when I was looking at these, I felt like they could go together as a team really nicely. The others, I the other long strips, I would, you could either do some silhouette stamping on them, I thought would be lovely. You could create a strip with some uh, lace or something over top or coming out of the sides. I mean, I just have so many, I could make so many videos on these and I'm sure you would get bored. Nonetheless, when I was looking at these, I thought that I quite liked the fact that one was wider than the other. And I quite liked that they kind of already fit nicely with ways across the card. So I just did a couple of little, little adjustments. And then these are going to sit really nicely on my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. I feel like I would love to tell you the measurements of these, but I truly don't know. They were already pretty much good to go. And I just trimmed them down just a tiny little bit. And then I'm going to use some Ranger Multi Medium in the matte finish. That's the glue that I have in these bottles. It's my favorite go-to glue. And I am going to pop those panels down and give them a second to dry. Now I also have, this is a new one to me, and this is the Burlap Texture Dye by Altenew. Now this one I feel, I already have several videos coming up where you're going to see this used because I feel like this is going to be a favorite and just one of those ones that kind of stays in your stash because this is just the best background piece. Now I actually have a video coming up uh, in a couple of videos and I think it might be my favorite use of it ever. <laughs> so for this one, I am just using a little uh, makeup sponge and I'm going to dab some glue on the back of that just to get really nice coverage. I tried not to go right around the very edges of the kind of burlapy uh, die just because I want those bits to kind of be a little bit free as well. I don't want it to be like completely and utterly stuck down. Then for a little bit of kind of florally, faunery sort of thing, I'm going to call use this Simple Sprigs. Now this just has four little dies in it and these are delicate and gorgeous. I'm going to use just a couple of them today and it is kind of that, I think everybody, not necessarily these ones, but maybe these ones if that's your, if you kind of like the look of them. But I think everybody should have one of these kind of, um, florally little sprigs or something uh, in their stash. If you are a card maker or a scrapbooker or a art journaling uh, fan, then I think some of these or any type of these, not necessarily this kind, is definitely worth the investment. Another couple of my ultra, ultra favorites actually happen to both be by Pink, Pink Fresh Studios. And one of those is the Curvy Leaves dies and the other one is Dainty Blossoms. I have used these in so many videos. I would couldn't even guess how many videos I have used these in. Um, so, so many. It's just these gorgeous little sprigs of, um, you know, leaves and twigs and little dainty flowers, some foliage, always is a really fantastic way to embellish a card front. Um, so that's just my personal opinion and that you might not be into that either, but I think uh, these are an absolute, great investment to have something like this in your stash. Now I have got a couple of them here. I've chosen kind of the largest sprig in here and I love the kind of dainty look of these. And so I sprayed them with the tumbled glass oxide. And then to deepen the color just a little bit, I put some chip sapphire oxide on top and that is going to help them stand out from the background plenty too. Then this is the Paper Rose All Occasions uh, sentiment set here. And this is super duper handy if you don't feel like stamping out sentiments every single time. I'm going to grab the word cheers and then to you I have got uh, from another little one. And then these are just going to create simple little flag banners up the top. Now I am going to put on little spots of this glue here. Now although it doesn't look like much holding it down, that's why I use this glue because I have faith that even a little bit holding it down is going to keep it very much in place. You could also pop a little bow around the bottom of these or a button on the bottom as well. But I wanted to keep this really plain and simple. And then I'm just going to pop a wee flag cut in the end of each of the uh, sentiments here and then layer them up the top. I gave them a good curl at the end so they kind of stick off the page a little bit. But hopefully today this video has given you a couple of new ideas. One around how we can use uh, all those kind of white larger scraps and strips uh, that we tend to gather 
and two, how you can create that gorgeous texture with just using bubble wrap and some, like a damp cloth or baby wipe, whatever you have to hand. And it creates actually the most amazing backgrounds using very limited supplies and pretty much what you could find in your household. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video today. If you are wanting to know a little bit more about some of the supplies that I have used or even some of the supplies that I mentioned would be good alternatives as good foliage, then I will have these listed all down below in the description box below this video on YouTube. And you just have to click the little more button and it will all show up down there. But other than that, thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.